Hey everybody, it's David Bott here from Outside Our Bubble, and today we're coming to you with an update to a tire pressure monitoring system, a TPMS. You've, that's the acronym you normally hear is TPMS, which stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Now I've done a few of these videos in the past, but a long time ago, and I figured I'd do another one now because there's another version of the Easy Tire that came out, and I wanted to basically show you how to install one and how easy it is. But more importantly, I wanna emphasize how important it is to have a TPMS. Now. A TPMS should do a number of things, not just alert you when you have a flat tire, but alert you, A, if the tire is getting too hot, so the rim or something like that, which means you may have st stuck brake pads and the heat is building up because the heat can cause a blowout or a fire. Um, so you want a TPMS system that monitors the temperature. You also want, of course, a TPMS system that reminds you if your tire is getting too low in pressure or too high in pressure. But one of the most important things that is mostly often looked in a TPMS is you want to monitor for slow leaks also. And a slow leak is important because when you set up a TPMS, which we'll do in this video, you set your high pressure point and your low pressure point. A lot of TPMS systems will wait until the pressure gets below the set point of your low pressure to alert you that there's a problem. Now that's not good because if you set your TPMS, say your, your tire pressure, excuse me, is for our front tires in this coach is 115 PSI. So if I set my low 10% below that, say to 100 PSI or something like that, the problem being is, um, I would have to wait for the tire to get below that on some other systems below it before we get an alert. But when you travel down the road, your tire heats up. And when your tire heats up, it increases the pressure inside the tire. So that 115 PSI when it's cold might get up to 130 when it's hot. And basically I want to monitor for loss. If I'm start, if, if, if my maximum pressure going down the road reaches about 130 and then within five minutes, it's down to like 120. I want to know that because I'm obviously losing pressure. I don't want to wait until it gets below 100 to get alerted. So a system that has a, a slow air leak detection or a rapid leak detection, uh, depending on how they word it, is one you want to make sure you have. The Easy Tire does have that, and it has had it for a very long time. This is just a new monitor that they came out with. Um, and so I figured I would take the time to let you all know that it is important to have one for a few reasons. One, be aware new motor coaches, new motor coaches will probably come with a TPMS system built into a dashboard. And then you're gonna say, well, I don't need this then. Well, yes you do. Because you need to, if you're towing a vehicle behind you or towing a trailer behind you, you need to at least have sensors on those tires so you can be alerted up in the cabin of your coach if one of those four tires on your tow vehicle or trailer go out or are low. Um, like we have, we have the, a post on our blog, outsideourbubble.com. There's a post where we picked up a nail in our Jeep tire when we were driving in Texas and the TPMS alerted to us that it had a low pressure situation and we were able to safely pull over before something occurred. If we would have waited and not known that, we would have just dragged that Jeep with a flat tire until it shredded the tire or worse, caught on fire. Um, if you don't believe me that that will happen, just do a search on YouTube for uh, towed car vehicle fire or something like that, and you'll find that that is that does and that does happen. So you want to be alerted. So and then you're going to say, "Well, Dave, my car has a TPMS system built in. Can I just use that?" No, because your car is not on and running when you're towing it behind you. So how are you going to be alerted? And then some people will tell me, Dave, I have an app on my phone that alerts me. My car tells me that. No, again, your car won't tell you that if your car is not on. So you want to be alerted in real time. You don't want to have to rely on an app to check things. And that's where a monitor-based system, any system, a monitor-based system that monitors it um, is the best way to go because you are alerted in seconds of an issue and not, you know, sometime later. So in any case, let me just show you what comes with the kit. And uh, this is a 12 kit, a 12 tire system because we have our coach, which has a tag axle, plus our trailer, which is four more tires. So normally you would have eight uh, on a tag axle system, um, but then you had four more to make it 12. And then since we're a trailer, we have a spare tire that we carry. We actually got one more for the spare tire because, hey, let's face it, you don't want to have to rely on your spare and then come on, come and find out it's flat. 
because for one reason or another, a valve stem went bad or something like that. So, important things to note. Um, make sure your, every tire is covered, including your spare. So let's take a look at this kit, what it comes with, what you need and don't need, and um, let's show you how easy it is to set up. Again, this is the EEZRV Products Easy Tire. So it comes with a manual, um, which will walk you through the setup process, which of course I'm just gonna do now. Um, and I'm gonna quickly just go through this, hopefully, and it'll make sense, and then I'm just gonna install the new system on our, our coach, and we'll be good to go. This is the monitor. Turn it on, and you'll see it's a full color monitor. And that's what it shows up like. Um, and right now it's showing you there are no tires that are on been programmed into the system, so therefore there's nothing showing up on here. Now you'll notice the sensors are right here, and you notice there are dots on them. Those dots I've already pre-applied. So basically they're just in a numbering system, one through 12 plus my spare tire. And the reason I have those is because um, when you go to put them on, we're gonna pre-program the monitor first, and then we're gonna put them on the tires. And so numbering them with the stickers uh, gives you an indication of where they go on the motor coach. And the monitor, as you will see, cycles be to, between passenger side and driver's side and goes back and forth between the tire positions. So I pre-numbered them based on the programming of that we'll be doing on here. So uh, there are 12, 12 tires plus a spare tire, as I mentioned. It also comes with a suction mount. So this you can suction to your windshield or your side window or what have you. And you can, you can change the orientation for it, uh, whatever you need to do. And then the monitor just clips on the back and you'll be able to put that wherever you want, hopefully. I usually put mine right on my dashboard. And then it also comes with UPS, uh, UPS, <laughs> USB charging cables because this is a USB-C charging port. Now you can, it comes with two cables. One, it comes um, with a hard wiring kit so you can hardwire it into a 12 volt system um, and then just plug that right in. Or it comes with its own uh, little USB adapter here for, for a cigarette port. Now the good thing about this is these batteries will last a long time. Um, the, so you can charge it up and then turn it off and it'll stay charged for a long time. So you literally don't have to keep it plugged in all the time. Obviously it's working and it's been in the box. So uh, it does come with the hardwire kit, the regular uh, regular USB with, the, you, with a 12 port adapter. So you plug it into your 12 port, plug the USB, plug it in there, off to go, charge it up. Okay? So we will not be using either of these for this install. I'm going on battery power. So I'm just going to set that aside. It also comes with these lock nuts, extra O-rings and extra, uh, two sets of O-rings actually, there's two different sizes. One is the cover cap. Uh, this cap is a cap right here that comes off, the battery is underneath this. Uh, replaceable batteries in this system. And so these are replacement O-rings to make a seal here if you need be. And then second, valve stem O-rings. So these are smaller ones um, go inside of here, which is your seal when you put it on your valve stem. Uh, so that is an extra seals for inside of there in case needed. Now the brass nuts, those are safety lock nuts. And the safety lock nuts is to, is to put them on in case you want to secure them so people can't back them off and steal them. Now I will tell you, don't use them. We've been doing this since 2008. Not once have we had a TPMS system or sensor stolen off of any tire, nor do I know of anybody who RVs who actually has had one stolen. I don't know it personally, nobody has ever mentioned it, nor have I read about it. So not that it doesn't happen, but in my humble opinion, I'm not gonna do it because I'm not gonna waste my time trying to have to remember I have to use one of, one of these special tools that it comes with to be able to get in there and unscrew it and screw it back down again because of the lock nuts. So I won't have to store this or anything because I'm not gonna use them. It's basically just consider this a big valve stem cover, if you will. Okay, so don't don't really worry about the the, the security lock things. It's just a hassle. But do keep the O rings because you might need those. Let's get on to programming, shall we? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the sensors that I have here, and again I already pre-numbered all the sensors. So I just basically what that means is I just put stickers on them that it comes with, 
and these are position, tire positions, one, two, three through 12, and spare. So what I'm basically gonna do is I'm just gonna take these sensors out here and show you how to program them. Uh, and I'm gonna just do a few here real quick, and then uh, it'll give you an idea how that works. But the first thing you need to do is you need to set your monitor up. And you set your monitor up for the high temperature, low temperature um, reading, or excuse me, high pressure, low pressure, leave the temperature where it sets normally, you don't have to touch that, uh, and type of readings. Like if you're, if you're from Canada, you might use Celsius versus Fahrenheit. So the first thing you do is you go into set here, hold it down, and it comes up PSI because that's what we want. If you want to change that, you know, now it says bar. Uh, uh, so PSI or bar, just hit set to move on, Fahrenheit or Celsius, set to move on. Now this is the first axle and this is saying high pressure. So I got my high pressure set for 145 PSI. So you would just want to change that. You would just go up or down with the arrows uh, with the plus or minus, excuse me, and set it to wherever you'd like it to be. It recommends 10 to 20% uh, in the manual. Just kind of go by, by that. Understand that the fact that uh, when you get to the low pressure, which is next, so you hit set, and now it says set your low pressure point. My front tire axles are 115 PSI on my tires. So I'm setting them for about 100 pounds, 100 PSI. Now understand, when it gets really, really cold out, if you go into some cold, cold climate areas. Uh, if you have, you leave your monitor on and it drops the temperature. When the temperature drops, the pressure in the tires will also drop. And in doing so, uh, your alarm might go off, your low pressure alarm. That happened to us because I had it set too high in the low pressure reading. And all of a sudden at three o'clock in the morning, beep, 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 we get a low pressure alert that wakes us up. And that's because I didn't turn off the monitor and it got really cold and the, and the pressure dropped. Air temperature affects tire pressure. So just be aware of that. So I set mine for 100. And so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through and, and set the different settings based on your tire pressure. So right now, this is the drive tire. And now uh, that's the low pressure. And then this is the tag axle. If you have a tag axle, you set that. Low pressure. And now we're onto the trailer. So you just go through and you set the axle, the axle Right, if they vary the, the tire pressure based on the axle that you're currently on. And I, you can see I've already preset all those. 158 degrees is, fair, is the temperature alert, which is fine. Leave that there. And then when you're done, you're back to PSI. Just hold down set. And those settings are now locked in. So that's all you got to do in order to set your axle or your tire pressures. And you do it again by axle, uh, front axle, drive axle, tag axle, and then your trailer or, or car tires. Now we're gonna set the, the actual sensors themselves. This is actually really easy to do. And if you number them like I did, then you just have to go out and put them in the correct position on your tires. So here's number one. I'm just gonna pull these aside over here real quick, get them out of the way a little bit, give them a little space. Don't get them too close because you wanna make sure you're dealing with one sensor at a time. Now this is just as easy to do as, set, as, as the first setup process. I got sensor number one here. I'm gonna hold down the code button now the code button is going to light up all the, it's going to light up and it's going to show me my current position will be blinking. So that's my passenger front tire and that's tire number one. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right next to the bottom of the code button and I'm going to hit code one time. And you notice it picked up the ID of that sensor. That's it. Now I hit plus, it goes to the next tire. Now this tire is the driver's side front tire. That's number two. So I put number one aside. I grab number two, which I've already labeled. And I do the same thing right on top of the code button. Hit it. I got it. Locked in. That's the sensor ID that you're showing on the screen. So now this is the pass passenger side outside dually, which is number three. Again, come down, hit it. Got it. Go to the plus button. Passenger side inside dually, number four code button. Got it. So on and so forth. Now, when you get back to your trailer, ah, what the heck, let's just do these real quick, shall we? So basically you're going to go through and you're going to do each one of those. Now, since I have a trailer, I won't be using these front ones here. So I'm just going to keep hitting plus to move through them 
until I get to the tires I want. And I want these ones. I want the ones that look more like where they are on my trailer. So in this case, it's going to be that one and that one, that one and that one, if that makes any sense. So those are there. And then my spare, I'll, I'll probably end up putting my spare up here in the top corner position. And when you're all done doing the coating, you're just going to hold down the code button like you did the set button and it's going to set. So those are locked into place. And now it's beeping because it's saying there's no pressure. That's because the sensors are not on anything. So this is the alert. It's telling me there's no pressure. It's 77 degrees, but there's no pressure uh, on, on the tire that is currently blinking, which is true because they're not hooked up to anything. So you just hit any button and it'll, it'll, it'll shut it up. Um, but as you can see, it's going through and it's blinking each of the locations because all of these are failed at this point. So as, and now notice when I held down the code button and saved it, it only shows the tire positions that I have programmed into the system. So if I did them all, they would all show up properly, including my tag axle. But I've only done um, the first six tires. So I'm going to finish doing the rest of the tires and then we're going to put them on. So that's not that bad, is it? Okay, so let me finish putting these on and then we'll just go install the tire sensors. So, welcome to our closet. Now, why am I in a closet? Well, that's because one of the other things you can buy for your TPMS system is a booster or a repeater. And those are important for large coaches. This is a 45 foot motor coach and then we have a trailer behind us or your tow vehicle. And you need to be to make sure that little sensor that's broadcasting that pulse of information reaches the monitor all the way up in the front of your coach. And that's where a booster or a repeater comes in. And those require 12 volt power. So in our particular case, in our coach and other coaches will vary, we ended up putting it in our closet, which is in the rear of the coach. And I got 12 volts out of the 12 volt panel, which is right down to our, my left hand side here. But this is the booster. So right back here is the TPMS booster. And you'll see a light will flash. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but there's an LED that flashes letting you know that it's on and it's working. And what will happen is, is when it receives a signal from any TPMS tire pressures, it'll repeat that signal, but stronger. It's, like, it's an amplifier because let's face it, these little batteries, these button batteries, they're only three volt batteries, but this is a 12 volt system here. So it's going to have a bigger antenna in it and it's going to have a bigger broadcast range. So therefore it can hear better and it can sound off better. So therefore when it sees any reading from any of the sensors, it's going to repeat that information in the air, hopefully up to the front of your coach. So you can have a good solid reading from your TPMS sensor. And that's very important because if you don't have good readings, what's the point? If you can't read your tires from the rear of the coach um, that are behind you, that's not a good thing. And let's face it, there's a lot of metal and there's a lot of noise created by the engine, things like that. And I don't mean physical noise, I mean digital noise or frequency noise. And that stuff can get in the way. So you want to make sure that you do have a booster or a repeater installed and you can put that in your engine compartment. You can sometimes put that on your trailer, uh, your tow trailer if you have one, or um, you can put it um, in our case in the closet and just tie it into 12 volts. And it's always on, it just runs. Um, but just wanted to let you know, that's what that is right there. And you might need one depending on the size of your motor coach. Great. Okay, now that I have the unit totally programmed and ready to go with all the tires as you can see. So all the tires, uh, including my trailer or a, you may have a tow vehicle. In my particular case, my trailer, so I have the tires close together or you may choose if it was a car to put them here, here, here and here. All depends on what you want to do. And this one tire off to the side, reminder, that's my spare tire for my trailer. So I also have that on there. And right now they have no readings whatsoever because all the sensors are sitting right here and I have to put them onto the trailer. And that's why we numbered them. Remember that when I, when I program them, it went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 spare. So you're going to want to put them in on that order. And as we put them on, they'll start showing up on the TPMS with the tire readings. So it's about that time to do that. Now, by the way, another reason you want a TPMS, which I forgot to mention is because before you get to head out somewhere, before you leave to head out somewhere, you want to know your tires are good. Now the old timers might say, oh, you just walk around with a little bat or whatever and you thump your tires to make sure they sound good. Well, unfortunately that is the old way of doing it. And I certainly wouldn't trust that, nor do I want to walk around and thump my tires. The reason I say that is because check this out. 
The video I'm showing you right now shows 83 PSI. That 83 PSI is from um, my tire pressure monitoring system reporting to me that my tire is 83 pressure and my other tire is 112. And it turns out, check it out, I had a slow leak in the valve stem. So thumping a tire, I would never have noticed it with a thump. It would have sounded the same, but I would have been at low pressure already. So I would never have known it without a TPMS. And that tire likely would have overheated with time. Um, so knowing before you leave that you have a tire issue is a positive thing, obviously. You don't want to head out when you already know, well, when you didn't know you had a tire issue. But the TPMS, turn it on 10 minutes or so as you're prepping your coach before you leave. Turn it on 10 minutes um, let, or what have you. Let it get all the tire readings and you'll know before you head out if you have a tire problem or not. So it's a good thing I tested my tires the other day or else I wouldn't have known. And yesterday I had the guy come and came right to the serve, right here to the park and replaced the valve stem for me. So kudos to, uh, for the for uh, Rick's tire repair that came out and also um, kudos to Coach Net who sent them out. Um, if you don't have Coach Net, might want to look into it. That's a good safety thing. Any case, without further ado, let's go install this new system now on the coach. Like I said, I had a system all the time. This happens to be new and it gives me an opportunity to show you the install. So now we have all the tires ready to go. We have all the sensors numbered right here, one through 12 plus the spare uh, for the trailer. Again, I'm doing a trailer. You're gonna want it to a tow vehicle. Tow vehicles are important. Um, so let's go do it. What do you think, Bren? I didn't, I, I know you kind of had a hint we were gonna do something, but I don't think you knew we were gonna run. But anyways, I'll fast forward through the boring stuff, okay? But let's go. Oh wait, I need a hat. It's really hot out today. So, um, and as I put these on, you'll see that uh, we'll start to get readings immediately from the tires. So here we go. Remember the first position was the, um, position one was the uh, uh, um, driver side, uh, was, the, was the driver side. Position, well Brenda's saying no, it's not. I'm going to double check. Passenger side. She's right. Uh, okay, I will wear a Coke. Say it louder. <laughs> passenger side. Brenda's right. Okay, so passenger side. So we're going to be alternating. Passenger side, driver side, passenger side, driver side as we go through the tires. Oh, this should be fun. Okay, here we go. Hello, girls. Okay, so as Brenda said, passenger side, Loki's gonna wanna follow us. So I'm gonna disconnect his leash there. So basically, I've already taken off the old caps on here and I'm gonna put these on. All it is, it's just a big valve stem cover. That's all it is. And so I got tire number one right here. So tire number one's gonna go on. And now when you do these, especially on these with a the little bit of, with the room that you have, you don't have a lot of room. You wanna try to go fast. You don't wanna lose too much air if you can. Okay? so. Start turning it and then turn it fast, 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 fast. And then once you, once you just get a little snug, you're good to go. And I will get a reading on that tire now. Uh, if I fast forward by clicking the buttons, you'll see 113 PSI, 75 degrees. I got a reading from that tire. Way to go. Now we're moving on to the next tire. Hello. Again, I have them pre-numbered, number two, because that's the second tire in the list. Just gonna screw it onto the valve stem here. And I will have a reading. I'm just going to back up here real quick. 114, 77 degrees. So now I know the next tire is over here. Come on, Moke. Should Come I on. Okay. So now we need, we need sensor number three, which is the outside dually in the order of, of tires. These are easier to do because there's no, nothing in the way. And I just, I always just then just back up and take a look to make sure I got the reading off that tire, which I do. 90 pounds, 78 degrees. And now I'm gonna do the inside dually, which is the next one. And 90 pounds, 77. 
Okay, now you would think you'd go right to this tire. Nope, remember, it goes by axle. So we have to go to the other side now. Here we go. So remember, axle. I'm not over there, I'm on axle. So we're gonna go number five here, which is the, it's gonna go across and down. So that's gonna be inside. Remember, it's coming across this way. So number five will be the inside dually. Number five, inside dually, click through, 91 pounds, 77 degrees, and then the outside dually. Oh, sugar, I dropped it. It went between the tires. Oh no. I got it. Tip. Hang on to your sensor. Don't let it drop between the tires and go down the hole. Then again, it wouldn't be a David video without me screwing up something, right? Right. Any case, going on to number six here. Six, outside dually. And I'm just gonna uh, go back in time and make sure I got the outside dually here. I do, 91, 80 degrees. So now we go to, back to the other side again. I know it sounds counterproductive, doesn't it? But that's the way it is. Because we're going backwards in axles. So now number seven is the, is the rear tag axle, passenger side. Now I didn't have to jump back and forth like this. I could have just put them on by the numbers because I know what order they are. Um, but I'm jumping around because it's just more fun for the video. 83 pounds, 80 degrees. So good reading from that sensor too. Now we go to the other side. And there's the first kit. Sensor number eight. Oh, see, almost dropped it again. Okay, number eight is on there. So now I'm just gonna back up. Um, the buttons you can do plus and minus to back up and go forward. 84 PSI, 78 degrees. Good reading off of there. Now, you would normally go on to your trailer or your tow vehicle. Ours happens to be out in the front of the coach, so let's go there. Again, you gotta remember, you're gonna be working from passenger side to driver's side on the axle, passenger drive to driver's side. So this would be the passenger side. So I'm gonna just grab this, grab sensor number nine, and put it on. Now be aware, these valve stems on here are rubber. People ask about that all the time. Will it affect, you know, will you have an issue? These things don't weigh much at all. So they will not hurt your rubber valve stems whatsoever on your car or your trailer. So let's just check to make sure I got the reading here. And I do, 71 PSI, 82 degrees. And now we go to the other side of the, again, by the axle. Again, do it with a jump button. You just, and I'm putting on number 10. And I just done really quickly check it to make sure that I got a reading. And I do, 74 pounds, 82 degrees. And then I go to the other side again. I'm just gonna leave that there. Spin. Put it on there. Check it. 71 pounds, 82 degrees. Next, the and if I check that real quick, 72 pounds, 84 degrees. Now, again, since I have a trailer, I have a spare tire. So I'm gonna put one on the spare tire also. I don't wanna know when I need to use a spare that it's not good to go. Cause a valve stem can go bad as we've learned on the motor coach. And I'm just flipping through here now. Again, plus and minus buttons to flip through the tires. And 67 pounds, 86 degrees. This tire I hadn't checked before, so I can probably add some more air to this tire knowing this reading, just so I know it's up to more, more closer to 75 pounds, which is what I like, like, I like to run them at on this trailer. Any case, at this point, I have all our tires now. The, everything is set up, everything is good. I'm getting readings on every tire. If for some reason a tire's battery goes bad or you're not getting a reading for whatever reason, you'll know within 15 minutes that tire will beep 
when it gets to that tire, it'll beep one time and tell you that it's not, that that's your indication that tire you're not getting a reading from for some reason. So you might want to check the battery on it or what have you. But other than that, we went around, we did every tire. It now cycles through the tires one at a time. Every six seconds, each tire moves through. However, if there's a failure in any of the tires, it'll immediately start to beep, 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 and go right to that tire. Let's do that on the spare. I'm gonna remove the pressure. There it is. So now it's immediately flashing that tire. It's telling me zero pounds on that tire. So I'm gonna just put it back. And now if it was a low pressure reading, it would have done the same thing. Not zero, it just would have told me it crossed the threshold. But in any case, this is why you want and need a TPMS system. And we hope that this helped you and does help you understand the reasoning for it, especially you new RVers out there. I've done four of these videos, I think at this point, but I figured it was time for a new one. I'm David Bott from Outside Our Bubble. And if you like what we do, please click subscribe and give us a thumbs up on the video. Other than that, we'll see you on the road. Take care, keep safe, bye.